Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Water Deck Profile for the Abyss Actor Advantage deck. I'm just going to go through everything in here, and then I'll explain how it works. So for monsters, we're playing all Abyss Actors. We have three Evil Heal, three Superstar, three Sassy Rookie, three Wild Hope, three Leading Lady, three Curtain Riser, three Trendy Understudy, three Funky Comedian, and three Extras. Our spells include three Abyss Script, Rise of the Abyss King, one Opening Ceremony, one Fantasy Magic, and two Abyss Tainment are traps, three copies of Storming Mirror Force, and three copies of Heavy Storm Duster. Our extra deck consists of one each of Utopia the Lightning, Utopia, Tornado Dragon, Baguska, Castell, Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy, Topological Bomber Dragon, Boral Load Dragon, Skull Deet, Firewall Dragon, Decode Talker, two Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, one Akashic Magician, and one Link Karibo. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So this is an advantage deck, which is a deck that's win condition involves gaining as much card advantage as you can. You do this both by destroying your opponent's cards and by drawing as many cards as you can. As far as destroying your opponent's cards, we mainly do this through Abyss Script, Rise of the Abyss King. You can target face-up cards on the field, up to the number of attack position Abyss Actor monsters with different names you control, and destroy them. And if you control a level 7 or higher Abyss Actor monster, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation. Considering this is a pendulum deck, oftentimes you can get 3, 4, maybe even 5 monsters with different names on the field. You can actually blow up quite a bit of your opponent's board. Now in order to get this card, we're playing Abyss Actor Superstar. When this card is normal or special summoned, your opponent cannot activate spell cards or effects, which is decent. But more importantly, once per turn, you can set one Abyss Script spell card directly from your deck, but it is sent to the graveyard during the end phase. And as far as destruction goes, that's really the core of the deck. Getting Superstar as quickly as possible, using Superstar to get Rise of the Abyss King, and blowing up your opponent's cards. As for the drawing and gaining cards portion of the deck, that mainly has to do with Wild Hope and Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this card, it's a Link Monster, it's any two Pendulum Monsters, which we're playing entirely Pendulum Monsters, and it's not difficult to get two of them on the field. When it's Link Summoned, you can add one Pendulum Monster from your deck to the extra deck face-up, and once per turn, you can target one other face-up card you control, destroy it, then add one face-up Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to your hand. And if cards leave your Pendulum Zone, you can draw one card, but you can only use that effect of it once per turn. Wild Hope, meanwhile, has the effect that if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can add one Abyss Actor card from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself, and you can only use that effect once per turn. In addition, its Pendulum effect is really useful, it doesn't help you gain advantage, but once per turn you can target one Abyss Actor card in your other Pendulum Zone, and its scale becomes 9 until the end of this turn, but you can't Special Summon monsters, except for Abyss Actors, even if this card leaves the field. This is good because it means that Wild Hope plus any other Abyss Actor monster uh, can give you the scales 2 through 9, which will pretty much allow you to summon everything in the deck. All the big strong monsters, the only thing you can't get are the level 2s and the level 1s, which you really don't want to be pendulum summoning that much anyway. Putting that aside for a second though, let's get back to the advantage portion of this. If you have this and you're able to make Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, what you can do is put this in your pendulum zone, destroy it with Electromite's effect, Wild Hope will get sent to your extra deck when it's destroyed. You can add it right back to your hand. Because it was destroyed, you get to search out an Abyss Actor, and because a Pendulum left the Pendulum Zone, you get to draw one card. So it's a clear plus two. You destroy this, and then immediately get it back while getting a search and a draw. Everything else in the deck is really just there to facilitate and complement doing those plays, using your Wild Hope and using your Superstar and Electromite. In particular, Curtain Riser can be really useful its pendulum effect is if you control no monsters, you could special summon it from your pendulum zone, but you can only use this effect once per duel. But if you start with this and any other normal summonable abyss actor, you've instantly got your Electromite. You put this in the pendulum zone, summon it, normal summon, there you've got your two pendulum monsters. Uh, likewise, Abyss Actor Extra says if your opponent controls a monster, you could special summon this from your pendulum zone, and you can only use this once per turn. So likewise, if you start with this and any normal summonable monster either way, if you have both, then you can summon both of them and not even use your normal summon that turn. Extras also has the monster effect that you contribute it to place one Abyss Actor Pendulum monster from your deck 
into the Pendulum Zone, but for the rest of this turn, you can't Special Summon monsters, except Abyss Actor monsters. This is really good, again, for getting your Wild Hope into the Pendulum Zone. If you've already made Electromite, and you have this, it's as good as having Wild Hope. Everything else in here, I'm just going to go over in the order that it appears, because really those are the base combos. Everything else is just sort of extra icing on the cake. Evil Heal has the most attack of your monsters. It's a level 8, so you can only really Pendulum Summon it if you have Wild Hope. But it has a pretty good monster effect. When it's normal or special summoned, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls. It loses a thousand attack for every Abyss Actor monster you currently control until the end of this turn. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can target one Abyss Script spell card in your graveyard and set it to your side of the field. So not only is this a big beat stick, it makes your opponent monsters even weaker. If you can Pendulum Summon it along with like two other Abyss Actors, you're lowering a monster's attack by 3,000. Normally that'll put things to zero. And then if you destroy a monster, you can get one of your Rise of the Abyss Kings or one of your other Abyss Scripts back onto your field. It also has a Pendulum effect. You contribute an Abyss Actor to target a monster your opponent controls, and it loses attack equal to the attack of the original monster you tributed. A, a decent tech, but not really essential to the deck. Uh, Superstar, I already mentioned, it's monster effect. It's pendulum effect. Once per turn, you can tribute one Abyss Actor monster to target a Abyss script in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Again, just a little recursion if you happen to get this in the pendulum zone. Sassy Rookie is your stall card and also sort of helps you with deck thinning. If it's in the pendulum scale, it has the effect that if an Abyss Actor monster you control would be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can destroy this card instead. Its monster effect is the first time this card would be destroyed by battle or card effect each turn. It is not destroyed. And if it's destroyed by battle or if it's in your monster card zone and it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you could special summon a level 4 or lower Abyss Actor from your deck, except a copy of itself. So like I said, pretty good for stalling. You can put it in defense mode. They have to destroy it twice. When they do destroy it twice, you're summoning something out of the deck. Usually I go for Wild Hope, because when Wild Hope's destroyed, you get to search an Abyss Actor. So really, they have to destroy three things in order to get past this. So it can be pretty good. Obviously, if they target it for removal, they can get rid of it. But usually it's not worth it for something that just has 1,700 attack, especially when you've got other bigger targets to worry about. Uh, Wild Hope, in addition to having the best Pendulum effect that lets you get everything, it has a monster effect that once per turn you can make this card gain 100 attack for every Abyss Actor you currently control with a different name until the end of the turn. Again, it's not much, it's just a little bit of attack boost, but you already have high attack and it just adds on a little bit more. You can get up to like 2100 or so. Uh, Leading Lady has the Pendulum effect that once per turn when you take battle damage from an opponent's attacking monster, you can activate one of these effects. Either that monster loses attack equal to the damage you took, which works even if this card leaves the field, it's a permanent attack grease. Or you can add one Abyss Actor Pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand, who has attack less than or equal to the damage you took. So this can be pretty decent to have in the Pendulum Zone, both because you can lower monsters and allow Evil Heal to get over things that have like 4,000 attack, or if you have a level 1 monster like Extras or Funky Comedian in your extra deck, you can add it back to your hand and then do more shenanigans next turn. While it's on the field, its monster effect is once per turn when battle damage inflicted, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls and it loses attack equal to the battle damage. And when this card is destroyed by battle, or if it's in the monster zone and destroyed by a card effect, you could set one Abyss script directly from your deck. So again, it's got a little bit of floating. It only gets you your spell trap, so it won't stall you for a turn. But if you have it in your hand, there's no reason not to just put it out in defense mode, because if they do destroy it, you're getting something. It's one more thing they have to get through. And while it's on the field, if you take battle damage from anything else, you can lower their attack. And unlike the Pendulum Effect, you get to choose any of their monsters to lower their attack. So you could potentially stop yourself from taking more damage or stop things from being destroyed by lowering a monster that hasn't attacked yet. Curtain Riser's monster effect is it gains 1100 attack if you control no other monsters. And once per turn, you could send an Abyss script from your deck to the graveyard to add an Abyss Actor Pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand. So there's a little bit of recovery if it's an attack mode. You can get Abyss Scripts in the graveyard, which you can recover. Uh, and just having 2200 attack, if nothing else, if you top deck this, it's a 2200 beat stick. Trendy Understudy's Pendulum Effect. When you Pendulum Summon a monster, add a face-up level 1 or 8 Abyss Actor Pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand. 
which is actually more useful than you might think. If you have an extra or you have a funky comedian in your extra deck, then when you pendulum summon out your other monsters, you can get this back. Normal summon these little monsters and then use them for, for tribute. For there, There's a lot of different effects. Um, in particular, I guess I'll go ahead and mention Abyss Tainment. Tribute one Abyss Actor monster, target one Abyss script in your graveyard, set it to your side of the field. You can only use this up to twice per turn. So once you get into a cycle, if you have this in the extra deck, you have one of these used, you have one of the Abyss Tainment, you can pretty much just cycle through them every turn. You pendulum something, something out, you get this back, you normal summon it, and then you use the Abyss Tainment to get your spell back out of the graveyard so you have it again. Its monster effect is if you have two Abyss Actors in your Pendulum Zones, you can tribute this card to Special Summon 1 Level 1 or 8 Abyss Actor monster in your hand or in your extra deck, which I've never really used, but it, it has the potential to be useful. If you have two monsters with scales that don't work or they get negated or something, you can just tribute this to get your evil heal out of the extra deck and at least have a 3,000 attack point monster. A Funky Comedian is sort of like the opposite of Evil Heal. Its pendulum effect is you can tribute an Abyss Actor monster to target another Abyss Actor monster, and it gains attack equal to the original attack of the tributed monster. Its monster effect is when it's normal or special summoned, it can gain 300 attack for every Abyss Actor you control until the end of the turn, and you can target one other Abyss Actor monster you control, it gains attack equal to this card's current attack until the end of the turn but this card cannot attack the turn that that effect is activated. So it has a, a minute boost, it's a level 1, it's mostly just here to fill in the deck, plus it has a high 8 scale, you can use it with uh, your trendy understudy, and it's also a target for Link Karibo. If you have this thing out on the field and you're worried about taking damage, you can just trade it out for Link Karibo. Same thing with Extra, in addition to all the other things I mentioned, you can also trade it out for that. Uh, the only other two Abyss scripts I didn't mention are Opening Ceremony, which is gain 500 life points for every Abyss Actor monster you control, and Fantasy Magic, which is target an Abyss Actor. This turn, every monster that battled it but is not destroyed is returned to the hand at the end of the damage step. Both of these are one-ofs. They're good in niche situations. Opening Ceremony, I pretty much just play for those times when you have to go first, or when you clear your opponent's field, you maybe already have one of these. And you just want to search with Superstar. It's just a little bit advantage. It never hurts you to have those extra life points. And it can save you on occasion. Uh, likewise, Fantasy Magic, only really useful for those monsters that can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. But there's just enough of them, and you can recycle them with your Abyss Tainment, that it's worth it to play it at one and then search it out whenever you need it. In addition, all these Abyss scripts have secondary effects that are really, really powerful that only trigger if they're face down, and your opponent destroys them while you have Abyss Actors in the extra deck. Rise of the Abyss King says you can add two Abyss Actor and or Abyss scripts with different names from your deck to your hand, so it searches two. Opening Ceremonies lets you draw until you have five cards in your hand. Uh, Fantasy Magic lets you target one card your opponent controls and place it on top of the deck. And Abyss Tainment lets you special summon any number of Abyss Actor Pendulum monsters from your deck. If your opponent destroys this, it is amazing. You, you pretty much just win the game off of that. It rarely happens, but it's nice to just be able to set these cards and not worry about if they get destroyed, because if they do, you're just getting good effects anyway. With all these, I'm playing Storming Mirror Force. This is a card that's kind of been power crept out just because there's so much spell trap removal in the game. Most people are going to clear your back row before they get to the battle phase. But it works with this deck because if you set two cards, your opponent is in this situation where if they know what the Abyss Actors do, they don't want to destroy your back row because it could lose the game for them. But if they don't destroy your back row, then they could be hit by Storming Le Mirror Force and lose everything on their field. Uh, with this, I also like to play Solemn Strike, but unfortunately there's just enough decks that, that rely on spell traps that I had to trade it out for... Heavy Storm Duster, just to have some spell trap removal. You don't really want Twin Twisters because there's nothing that's good in the graveyard. You don't have any way to recover anything from the graveyard except your Abyss scripts. I would highly recommend, though, uh, keep Solemn Strikes in the, the side deck. Maybe even swap these out and play these in the main deck. Have the, the Heavy Storm Duster in the side deck. And just bring it out if your opponent has spell traps. Put this in. If not... Play the Solemn Strikes, because they run on the same principle that Storming Mirror Force does. Your opponent will be afraid to get rid of them, but if they don't, you can stop their plays and their tracks.
The rest of the side deck is mostly just other options. Pendulum Reborn can be really good, especially if you Ixie summon more, because it lets you summon a Pendulum monster from your extra deck or your graveyard. can also be really good if you're playing against Counter Fairies, because they'll negate your summons, and then your monsters will be in the graveyard, and you can get them back again. There's another Abyss Actor uh, spell. It's not an Abyss script, it's an Abyss prop, which is weird. And it's the first time each Abyss Actor monster you control would be destroyed by battle. It is not destroyed. Once per turn, you can target an Abyss Actor you control. And your opponent cannot target it with card effects until the end of the turn, even if this card leaves the field. Like the other cards, if it's destroyed by your opponent's card effect while it's set, it also gains an effect. This one returns all cards your opponent controls to the hand. So, if your opponent's playing a lot of spell trap removal, this might be fun to side in just to set. Likewise, maybe you're playing a troll deck and they have Magic Cylinder that you're worried about. This will stop it. In most cases, it's not really useful and it's not even searchable with, uh, with Superstar because it's not an Abyss script, it's an Abyss prop. But it might be nice to play one in the side deck, maybe even three of them if you're really worried about being targeted by things. Uh, likewise, another Abyss Tainment can be really good. Another Fantasy Magic can be really good against certain decks. I originally tried to play this with Wavering Eyes, because it's at 3. It's normally good for Pendulums, but most of your Pendulums don't get effects when they're destroyed. Only Wild Hope does. So I found that most of the time it wasn't really worth it. Against another Pendulum deck, though, this is pretty much a must-of, especially if you're playing against Pendulum Magicians. You can just wipe them out completely, and it's worth it to, to destroy their zones and gain, gain a card in the process. And that just leaves us with Ignite Reload and Abyss Actor Twinkle Little Star. Uh, reload's just a good way, if you wanted to get rid of some of these, or maybe you don't have them to use if you're playing this in real life, this can be a good way to draw through your deck, reveal any number of pendulum monsters from your hand, shuffle them into the deck, draw cards equal to the number you did, plus one. Maybe if you wanted to strip this down a little bit, focus entirely on the Wild Hope Superstar combo, uh, you could put this in to make it a little bit more consistent. And Twinkle Little Star is pretty nice, it has a scale of nine, so it's the only other card other than Wild Hope that can summon Evil Heal. It also has this effect that Abyss Actors can attack up to three times per turn, which with Evil Heal lowering things to zero, you could OTK with it. It's not out in the TCG yet, and I try to play cards that only exist or are soon to exist, so I didn't want to play this one. But if it comes out, might be worth trying out. And that just leaves the extra deck, which is mostly a toolbox. I play a bunch of rank fours because we have a bunch of level fours. You could play rank 7s or 8s if you want, ranks 1, I didn't really find it all that necessary. I'd recommend the one Link Karibo if you have it, just because we've got the level 1 monsters that you don't want on the field. And then the rest is just links. it's not that difficult to swarm with monsters. You definitely want to have some uh, Heavy Metal Foes Electromites, uh, you definitely want to have like a Decode Talker, just to get rid of this if you need to. But the rest is just whatever you feel like, whatever you can make, whatever's out. Go ahead and put it in there, because it's not difficult to get four monsters on the field. And that's the Abyss Actor Advantage deck. Not the greatest thing, but it's nice to see how Abyss Actors, which are often overlooked, a little little underrated, work with the new Heavy Metal Foes Electromite that came out. Uh, if you're interested in seeing this deck in action, you want to see some of the combos and how it works, I've got a link in the description to a separate, longer video where I play ten duels against random opponents. Check that out if you want. Otherwise, until next time, good luck and have fun.